everybody, my name is Maggie and I'm a zookeeper here at Brookfield Zoo. Today we are doing a Facebook Live on a two-toed sloth. You guys have probably all been waiting for this one. So we're gonna give you guys an up close and very special experience to learn all about Elsie, our two-toed sloth. She is part of our animal ambassador program. So everyone, please hang around because we're gonna be answering any of your questions that you might have after we learn all the really cool facts about her. So as you can see, Elsie is hanging around in her tree. Slobs live in trees. That's where they spend pretty much their entire lives. So this species of sloth lives in South and Central America, and she lives in the tropical rainforest. So as you can see, we're gonna watch her move around her tree, and she's gonna show how she's so well adapted to living her life up in trees. So let's check out her really cool claws. She has very long claws that kind of look like big hooks and that um, really helps her move around in the trees. So Elsie, as we mentioned, is a two-toed sloth. So right now we're checking out her back toes, but you can tell a two-toed sloth by their front claws. So they have two toes, but in the back they have three. So um, there are two types of two-toed sloth. Elsie El specifically is a Linnaeus' two-toed sloth, and then there's also a Hoffman's two-toed sloth. There's also a different type of sloth called a three-toed sloth. And you guessed it, they have three toes right up in front. So that's another way to tell them apart from the type of sloth that Elsie is. <laughs> Looks like she's checking you guys out on the camera. So as we watch her move around on the tree, you can tell how she uses these claws to help guide her around. And she can just with ease grab onto branches. Let's see if she wants a snack grab onto those branches with those hooks, kind of like clothes hangers. So she easily just hooks on and moves around pretty gracefully from branch to branch. She uses very little energy to do this. So these guys, that's one adaptation that they have to spending their life up in the treetops. So we've all heard probably that slobs are really slow. So Elsie's probably gonna be speeding around on this tree a little bit. She's getting some of her favorite snacks and she's up for moving around during this chat. But in the wild, they definitely are very slow animals. They really only sleep around eight to nine hours a day, so similar to us, but they don't spend much time moving. All their food is found up in the trees where they live, so they don't have to go very far to find it. So they might sit in one spot on a branch and just reach to find their food. So they'll sit in a crook of a tree and just reach with their arm and uh, find the leaf that they want to eat. So they're pretty efficient. They're not lazy, but we like to call them efficient animals. So what they eat in the wild is exactly where they live. They eat leaves. And they find that right in the treetops where they're gonna be hanging out. So in the wild, they eat a wide variety of leaves, fruit, flowers. They really like hibiscus flowers. That's one of her favorite treats. We offer that to her here at the zoo sometimes too. But sometimes, or here at the zoo, her um, diet consists of a little bit of uh, different um, items. She gets a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. She gets biscuits that are made just for leaf eating animals. And she also gets a variety of different kinds of greens, so different lettuces. So the things that she would find out in the wild that she would eat take her a really long time to digest. So that's another thing that she does kind of slow. So that takes her up to a week to digest her food. Some things even take a month to digest. So that means that she might only go to the bathroom once a week in the wild. It's pretty crazy. She doesn't seem to want any of the snacks that I'm giving her. <laughs> so here at the zoo, she goes a little bit more often, but uh, in the wild, they only go to the bathroom once a week. That's pretty wild. So that also helps them. Um, going to the bathroom once a week, um, when they go to the bathroom, they go all the way down to the bottom of the tree and they go to the bathroom and they, they keep that as far away from them as possible to keep predators away from them. So their best line of defense um, in the wild is their coloration, their camouflage. So let's take a look at Elsie's fur. Uh, she's got these nice browns all over her um, and that helps keep her blending in with where she lives. So this tree that she's hanging out on right now doesn't have any leaves on it, 
So her coloration right now is pretty well camouflaged. But in the wild, she's gonna be living in lush green rainforests. So there's lots of different colors. So in the wild, these guys are actually known to grow algae on their backs. They have a little ecosystem growing on their backs and that helps them blend in even more. So not being able to be found is their best line of defense against predators. Sitting still, blending in, so that's the best line of defense against predators. <laughs> so right now, Elsie, she might also sniff around her tree. We've been getting a lot of close-ups of her face. She has a really big nose and she's got a great sense of smell. That's how she's gonna find a lot of things in her environment. That's how she's gonna sniff out all the foods that she wants to eat. She doesn't have great vision, but she's got an excellent sense of smell. So I'll go back to her predators that she would be um, you know, camouflaging herself in the trees from. There are some large eagles that live in South America, um, large cats that might prey upon them, and humans, of course, can be predators of sloths. They are sometimes sold in the pet trade, and every once in a while when they uh, need to cross a road, they can sometimes get hit by a car. So, you know, we've been talking about sloths living in trees and how important it is and how they spend almost their entire lives. But what happens when they need to get out of that tree or they need to switch trees? Sloths don't very often go to the ground, but when they do, they can be quite vulnerable. So every few days or every week or so, they may want to switch trees. So they have to climb all the way down and they have to crawl on their bellies because there's no branches on the ground for them to, cr to climb on. So a sloth will have to kind of army crawl on their belly to get to another tree. So they're pretty vulnerable at that moment, but they, as fast as they can, switch to another tree. And a really kind of interesting fact that uh, is known about sloths is that they're really good swimmers. They've been uh, seen by locals to be swimming um, in rivers if they need to, or if they've fallen out of a tree or they need to switch trees, they can actually swim quite quickly much faster than they can walk. <laughs> Looks like she's really interested in you guys. She's a really curious sloth. She likes to smell different things. She always loves all the different enrichment that we might give her. Some of her favorite foods are usually grapes. <laughs> Doesn't look like she's too interested today. She also loves green beans, zucchini. She's a pretty healthy eater. Do we have any questions? I'd like to, we're gonna Turn to you guys to ask some questions. Wow, we have, is she colorblind? You know, I'm not sure. That's just something that we're not sure if she's colorblind. Good question. Oh, how many babies? Let's talk about um, their reproduction. So as we mentioned, you know, talking about um, slobs and all the things that they do in trees, well, they give birth up in trees too. And when they give birth, um, they only have one young at a time. So their gestation is around seven to um, 10 months long. And uh, when they give birth, the baby will hang out on the mom's belly and they'll hang with the mom for around nine months and then eventually move off into another tree into their own territory. That's a really good question. Sloth babies are really cute. And the, oh, our next question is about, was Elsie born here? No, she was not. She, was, uh, she came from another institution. So Elsie right now is six years old and she'll be seven years old in December. So Elsie can be seen a lot during the summer as she's part of our animal ambassador program. So she comes out for chats. She can be seen up close and personal a lot in wild encounters. So you might just bump into her in, in your next visit um, during the summer, she's out a lot. But if you want to see a sloth pretty much any day, head on over to Tropic World and you might see our other sloth, Raisin, which I know a lot of you are very familiar with. But Raisin is a different uh, species of sloth. Raisin is a Hoffman's two-toed sloth. So very similar, two toes in the front. Um, they're just from a, a different region. Sometimes they have a different coloration, but very similar, very close cousin to Elsie. Oh, they're hearing. Um, She's probably got pretty decent hearing. She spends a lot of time sitting and listening, but, um, but her sense of smell is really what's gonna help her find things out in the wild. 
Oh, her average lifespan. So here um, at the zoo under professional care, Elsie's gonna live a really long life into her late 20s. These guys can live a really long time. She's got excellent health care here at the zoo. She's got, we have a great vet staff always taking care of her. We have a nutritionist. Um, so she's getting all the, her excellent needs and amazing zookeepers taking care of her every single day. But out in the wild, she's got to deal with all sorts of elephants, predators, um, you know, searching for food every day. So her lifespan will be definitely shorter, maybe around like 15 or 16. Good question. Do her claws grow and do we maintain them? So her claws definitely grow. They absolutely do. So we do do some maintenance on her nails. So if they get really long, we can trim them. They're made of the same thing as your nails. So sometimes we may need to trim them shorter, but sometimes she breaks them off herself or she might wear them on the naturalistic branching in her home. So in the wild, she would do the exact same thing but we help her do that here at the zoo and it's all voluntary. She gets a nice big green bean or a grape um, if we're doing that behavior. So she participates actively in her nail trims. <laughs> it's like she's trying to hold everybody's hand. <laughs> is her fur soft? Her fur is actually quite coarse. It's not soft at all. It looks pretty long and soft um, if you're just looking at it, but it's actually quite coarse. And that also aids in, um, she were out in the wild, uh, the algae that would grow on her back, um, that kind of, they actually have grooves in each individual hair that helps the algae grow in it. Do they enjoy being held? Um, I don't know that they necessarily enjoy being held. Um, a wild sloth is not a friendly animal. Uh, we work really closely with Elsie and we have an extremely positive relationship with her and we have built that behavior um, with her so she knows it's extremely positive. She gets a lot of reinforcement for it. Uh, we never make her do anything she doesn't want to do. So if she doesn't want to participate in a training session, she doesn't have to. How much does Elsie weigh? Elsie weighs around 20 pounds. Good question. Does she sharpen her claws? She doesn't really sharpen her claws. They aren't really for defense too much. They're more for just moving around, but she does have self-sharpening teeth. So let's see if we can get her to show off her teeth. Now these teeth aren't really for self-defense either, unless she was needed to defend herself against another sloth. So let's check out those pretty wild teeth. You want another grape? Not that one. <laughs> so her teeth, they rub against each other and they actually self-sharpen. So if she needed to defend herself against another sloth, perhaps a male sloth, or um, just anyone else coming into her territory that she doesn't want there. That's what she's really gonna use those, those teeth for. But once she gets um, into it with a big predator, there isn't much she can do with those teeth. How many hours does she sleep? Um, she sleeps probably right around eight or nine hours, so just like us. But she doesn't spend the rest of the day moving around or doing much, they spend a lot of time resting. So they are still very slow animals and they wanna conserve a lot of the energy that they have. A lot of the food that they eat in the wild doesn't provide them with a lot of energy. So they have to conserve whatever they have. Natural predators out in the wild. So we've got jaguars, there's a harpy eagle in South America, and humans are um, an unfortunate predator of sloths. Is she endangered? No, she is not endangered. All right, guys, well, you guys have asked us amazing questions. Thank you so much for hanging around with us. We are going to wrap this up. So thank you so much for spending time with me and Elsie today. And I hope you can visit us at Wild Encounters, and I hope you run into us during a chat. And uh, I'll see you around at Brookfield Zoo. <laughs>